For every Naga family, rice is the staple food. It is consumed daily and is therefore a very important food crop. Have you ever wondered how the rice on your plate is cultivated? In this video, we will learn about a special method of farming called terrace cultivation. Naga villages are normally built on elevated ridges or hilltops. The houses are perched on top and it is surrounded by vast patches of land. Nagas, as an agricultural-based society, have always sourced their food from the land that surrounds them. In most Angami or Chekasang villages, you will see that the beautiful terrace fields dominate the landscape of these villages. It is from these terrace fields that rice has been cultivated since time immemorial. So what is terrace cultivation? Terrace cultivation is a way of farming on hills, mountains or slopes. In this method, slopes are carved out, making the fields look like huge steps. So why is there a need to cut steps? Why not just farm on the slopes? That is because when it rains, the water takes away the topsoil, its nutrients and also plants with it. It can cause mudslides, which will make it difficult to farm in the future. The steps in the terrace fields slow down the rush of water and enables the soil nutrients to flow from one step to the next. The soil quality is thereby retained. And this makes terrace farming very productive. The most important element of terrace cultivation is water. It can be practiced only when there is sufficient water and therefore it is dependent on the monsoon rain. A well-planned irrigation system has to be in place with a proper water channel. The fields are irrigated in such a way that water flows down conveniently from one terrace to the other. Every step has an outlet which sends water to the next step. In some places, bamboo pipes are used to regulate the flow of water. Each terrace is bound by raised mud at the edges, which not only retains water, but also prevents soil erosion. We will now look at how rice is cultivated in the terrace fields. The first step is preparation of the field in spring. Here, the soil of the dried bed is loosened and turned by ploughing. Pig manure, cow dung, straw or compost manure is also used to make the soil more fertile. A patch of land is then selected for the nursery bed after which the paddy seeds are sown. When the rainy season starts, the digging of the soil and puddling of the paddy fields begin. This process draws out the weeds and softens the soil to enable plantation. The seedling of the paddy is then transplanted from the nursery bed to the fields. The seedlings are planted in rows with similar gaps in between them. Usually, only one seedling is planted at a time. Some farmers also practice releasing fishling and snails into the paddy fields once the paddy seedlings take firm roots. Weeding is the process of manually removing weeds with our hands. When the seedlings have taken roots after transplantation, the process of weeding starts. Weeding is necessary to keep the field clean and healthy for the crops. 
during weeding season or in some cases after harvest depending on the water level. Farmers also catch small fishes, snails or edible insects from the fields for consumption. It is said that these snails and fishes taste better. Once the grains are mature but still green in color, the sheaves are tied together to support the grains from falling. This also helps easier harvest. Harvesting is the process of cutting the sheaves from the plant. The harvest is usually ready by the end of October when the grains turn golden yellow. Harvesting continues till November depending on the location of the village. Threshing is the process of separating the grain from the sheaves. The sheaves of the paddy are collected and brought to a convenient place, usually in an open dry place for threshing the grain. The next step is called winnowing. In this process, flat baskets are used to fan the chaff from the grains. The clean paddy grains are then stored for consumption. You must have noticed by now that terrace cultivation involves physical labor and manual work. One special thing about the Naga Society is that the community comes together to help each other, be it peer groups, neighbors or relatives. Since heavy machinery cannot be used on the slopes, this unique support system helps the farmers, especially when heavy work is required in the rice fields. Rice cultivation can be carried out only once a year in the terrace fields. During the dry winter months, different kinds of vegetables can also be planted in the terrace fields. In this way, farmers can make the most out of their fields throughout the year. Seeing the vast benefits of this method, other tribes are also beginning to adopt this practice. Terrace cultivation embodies the best of us. It is sustainable and eco-friendly. It is also reflective of how our community has thrived in the past and continue to do so by creatively using the space around them, working hard and supporting each other. The next time you see a terrace field, remember these fields represent much more than just an agricultural land. <music>